Shalom, beloved. A word. As we look in the book of Matthew, we understand that we honor and serve the Most High in, the, in spirit and in truth. And we know that Yahuwah is truth and his words are true. We're looking at the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. We will now look at the book of James, chapter 2, verse 13. But we wonder what happens to the unmerciful. For he shall have judgment without mercy, that have showed no mercy, and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. Yes, beloved. Now, we have to look at the state of affairs that we witness every day in truth. The Afghans versus the Haitians, welcome versus whips, kindness versus cruelty, and Biden's silence on Haitians. A broken regime versus earthquake and broken dreams. Let's look at how the Afghans are treated, the Afghanistan versus the Haitians. So we have all watched the Herculean um, evacuation effort. We know that thousands of Afghans were able to get out, particularly Afghans who helped you. Forgive me. US troops and diplomats over the last 20 years. They're now arriving in America as refugees. Many of them will be expected to apply for special visas or humanitarian protection as they begin their new lives. However, the sudden influx is putting a heavy strain on refugee resettlement agencies. So for more on this, I want to bring in our immigration reporter, Camilo Montoyo Galvez. Uh, Camilo, I'm so glad you are here. What do these numbers look like? How many people will need to be resettled in the U.S.? Good morning, Emory. That is a great question. The U.S. has yet to publicly commit to resettling a specific number of, of evacuated Afghans and refugees from that country. But what we know, Emory, is that the U.S. military has been instructed to build up enough housing capacity at seven military bases across the U.S. mainland to house up to 50,000 Afghans and their families. Uh, so this is kind of the ballpark target that we have, 50,000 Afghan refugees could be housed at U.S. military bases. That is a maximum capacity that the military has been instructed to build up at these military sites in Wisconsin, Virginia, New Jersey, and New Mexico to temporarily process these Afghan families before they are relocated to their places of permanent residence here in the U.S. and before they're connected to these nonprofit resettlement agencies, which will help them secure affordable housing uh, and job training, uh, as well as the educational services uh, to integrate here into American society. Uh, so that is very important to note. Um, and is what, what is also worth um, highlighting, Anne-Marie, is that this is a massive operation to resettle uh, close to 50,000 Afghan refugees, uh, but it is still um, important to highlight that we resettled a lot more Vietnamese refugees after the fall of Saigon. All right, beloved. Now we see over 50,000, they're making sure they have proper housing, education. They're treating them in a humane manner mercifully now we will look at the haitians the associated press is reporting that many of the group of mostly haitian migrants at a camp near the u.s mexico border are now being released into the united states manny bahork has reports from del rio texas Good morning, Manny. Well, good morning. That AP report claims that many have been released with notices to appear at an immigration office within 60 days. And we have seen for ourselves at one location here in Del Rio, Texas, where dozens were allowed to enter. As we await word from Homeland Security, this will likely just add to criticism of the Biden administration's response. President Biden says his administration is handling the influx of mostly Haitian migrants at the southern border. The Biden administration is a man-made disaster of inhumanity 
of epic proportions. Republican Texas Governor Greg Abbott visited the camp Tuesday, expressing doubts that all the migrants would be processed soon. The only thing that they've shown is an incapability of dealing with this crisis candidly in a way where they pretend it doesn't even exist. And we're here to tell you it exists. Border Patrol agents that were seen on horseback grabbing and lashing out at migrants are now on administrative duties pending a Homeland Security investigation. The administration has sent additional Border Patrol agents to the area as more than 8,000 migrants remain in the camp. With other sections of the river now off limits, this shallower stretch of the Rio Grande has become a lifeline. Many come over here to the Mexican side to buy food to bring back to their families at the bridge camp. All right, beloved. Now we will look at kindness versus cruelty. Again, we are looking at the Afghanistans and how they are welcome. They are not living in camps. They have the military operating in a manner to give them housing, education, to integrate them into the American society. 50,000. 98 countries pledged to accept Afghanistan's Afghans after U.S. military departs. Forgive me, I thought this was a um, video. Let me get this to collapse. If I can, okay. The United States and 97 other countries said on Sunday that they would continue to take in people fleeing Afghanistan after the American military departs this week and has secured an agreement with the Taliban to allow safe passage for those who are leaving. But wait a minute, the countries also pledged to continue issuing travel documentation to designated Afghans and cited a clear expectation of and commitment from the Taliban of their safe passage. So you have 98 countries pledging to accept them. Let me go back. And now we will look at what is happening where they are being accepted, a great majority of the Haitians are being deported. I wanted to show you images of them. They are going to food trucks. This is after the horrific earthquake and the storms that were occurring in Haiti. These are images of the earthquake, people pillaging through, trying to find sustenance and something to survive on. That is also why they are coming into the United States. However, over here where we see the Afghanistans, we see them, the Red Cross is offering help and humane treatment. Let me go back. We are going kindness versus cruelty. Here is the kindness shown. I'm hoping that this is the one I was looking for. Forgive me. I had quite a few. I'm going, I read that. I'm sorry. I'm going to show the video now. U.S. ramps up Haitian deportation flights, but lets other migrants stay. The United States ramped up its Haitian migrant deportation flights from the state of Texas back to Haiti. Let me also add, ladies and gentlemen, that Texas is also one of the ones with open arms allowing the Afghanistans in. Even as thousands of other Haitians were being allowed into the U.S. on the promise to appear at an immigration office within 60 days. White House press secretary said the U.S. was deporting Haitians to their homeland under a health code provision, citing the coronavirus pandemic as a reason to clear the border as quickly as possible. Now, we must keep in mind that this same virus was worldwide, but somehow this does not apply these egregious conditions, these unsanitary conditions. You do not see anybody making tents, any military at work trying to help the Haitians at the Rio Grande, at the border. Let's go back, beloved. And now the final piece, Biden's silence on the Haitians.
Hey guys, check this out. If you own a home and you don't have one of these Generac Power Cell home batteries, as these authorities the grapple with deteriorating conditions at a southern U.S. border camp where thousands of migrants have gathered, most of them from Haiti, the White House is pushing back on pressure from all sides. Press Secretary Jen Psaki on Wednesday acknowledged the poor conditions and condemned the U.S. Border Patrol agents' use of reins to intimidate migrants trying to cross the river. We've watched the photos of Haitians gathering under a bridge, many with families, and the horrific video of the CBP officers on horse on horses using brutal and inappropriate measures against innocent people. I think it's important to take to address that and separately address what our immigration policies are. The images led Vice President Kamala Harris on Wednesday to raise grave concerns in a call with DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, her spokesman said. Saki said the agents have been put on administrative leave while the incident is investigated. Meanwhile, the government is continuing to fly hundreds of people back to Haiti while releasing some into the U.S. Saki defended the Biden administration's use of a sweeping Trump-era public health order used to expel migrants known as Title 42. Title and yet Title 42 does not apply to the Afghans who are allowed to come. Why? Maybe because they don't look like the Hebrew brothers and sisters. Yes, beloved, they are part of Yasharel. They are part of that diaspora. And again, to finish, I am just showing the difference. How is it that the coronavirus and the pandemic applies to the Haitians, but it does not apply to the Afghans? They are being welcomed. They are being given housing, education. They are given job training. They are not sleeping on the ground. They are either being welcomed into homes, apartment buildings, or military sites set up to receive up to 50,000, not to mention 98 other countries in agreement. What we are looking at, beloved, and I want to go back and find it, is the book of James, chapter 2, verse 13. For he shall have judgment without mercy that has showed no mercy but mercy rejoiceth against judgment, okay? We are looking at a situation where it is unmerciful and it is based on the historic racism in this country. How is one group allowed where another group is discarded, particularly when that group that's being discarded, their land is in rubble, it has been destroyed through storm and through earthquake, and yet through a lot of red tape and political jargon that people are supposed to believe instead of the truth of what humanity is, they are being deported back. In some cases to starvation and certain death. Many women have given birth while in those camps. These are families seeking asylum. When you see the men riding on the horses, they are doing it while those people are in the water. And all they're trying to do is bring food to their families. But there should be relief. Just as we saw the Red Cross offering food to the Afghanistans, we too should see them doing the same for the Haitian at the border seeking asylum. And everyone understands why, because their nation is in rubble. It is in rubble. I'm going to finish, beloved, with the book of Daniel. I'm going to finish with the book of Daniel. And I am in, forgive me, I am in the book of Daniel, chapter 12. And I'm starting at the 10th verse. Many shall be purified and made white and try, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand but the wise shall understand, beloved. This judgment shall be great. This judgment shall be great. When we look at the inhumanity, when we look at the lying words, when we look at the double talk, when we listen to a man who once talked about the fact of how much he needed that Black vote, that throw it away, deport it, get rid of those kind of people vote, 
in order to gain his office. And the only reason he is in office is because the other one, he's just the lesser of two evils. He is just the lesser of two evils, but beloved, the, the Lord's eyes go to and fro throughout all the earth and he sees everything. And remember, blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. We also know when we look at verse four, but thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. What knowledge? The knowledge of the truth that cannot be denied because we are the children of the most high and all those who hear that word and honor the most high, they know truth. And what we are looking at is a racist inhumanity in our faces, beloved. A racist, corrupt, unjust, cruel, unmerciful inhumanity. If they can bring in 50,000 people from across the ocean, they can welcome the migrants who are seeking asylum and refuge, who have crossed the river in desperation with nothing more than the clothes on their back and whatever little money they have in their pockets trying to survive, beloved. Now we are going to lift up holy hands in one spirit. Yahuwah HaMashiach, God of our ancestors, Yahweh Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Look upon these, our circumstance, Jacob's trouble, and come with mercy and forgiveness, forgiving our sins and the sins of our ancestors. You said your judgment, judgment is yours, vengeance is yours, and you will repay them double. Father, we ask that you flow and flood the land with that anointed mercy and show mercy for the Haitians, show mercy for Yasharel. And let that spirit go throughout all the land. Let all the world see, hear, and know they're convicted by truth, the truth of their own unmerciful inhumanity, the truth of making a distinction between one people and another people and trying to make unacceptable things acceptable. We praise, honor, and glorify you as we recognize these things. Let all the world's eyes be open and let your mercy flow, beloved. Let your mercy flow unto the Haitians, Father, for they too are seeking asylum. They too. And as Babylon allows the, their enemies in, those who do not think like them, while rejecting those with open arms and begging for mercy. We ask that you move, you move and let everyone get a witness of what is being done today. Let no politician with any great speech and eloquent words manipulate the truth into a lie for him to gain office, but let only thy truth speak that all who deserve mercy, let mercy be upon them. And all the unmerciful, let thy judgment come. We give you honor, praise, and glory, Yahuwah HaMashiach. We give you glory, honor, and praise, Yahuwah. And we bless your holy word, Yeshua HaMashiach, and give honor to a Ruach HaKadosh. Amen. Shalom, beloved. A word.